the concept of self-modifying code is very simple. It's basically you rewrite your own code as, uh, at runtime. Uh, what makes it possible is, uh, is the so-called von Neumann architecture. So here uh, in this architecture, uh, code and data are treated the same. They are they are stored at the same place. You know, maybe first on disk, then it pulled on into memory, and um, yeah, code and data is the same. So rewriting your own code is is inherent in this in this architecture. Um, the easiest to see is it, it see this in action is is in assembly. Um, the simple trick is that uh, take take the address an address in your code and start writing some bytes to it and later jump into that those parts of the code and that's all there it is now of course uh, in in uh, practice this this is a this can be a lot more complicated Let, let's take a look at uh, an example so here uh, i have a hello world in assembly uh, i I talked about these these level of assembly in earlier videos. I, I will give a link link to them. I will not not make a, I will not go very deep into that explanation. So we have a data section here with a simple string, uh, hello world and the new line. Uh, I store the length with some help uh, with the NASM. I will use the net net wide assembler to compile this. Then. Um, I will mark the start as the glob uh, as a global symbol, so the linker can pick it up later. And uh, here I call two functions: first a print and an exit. I, I separated them so you can see you can compare them easily. So this is uh, the simple way how you can call a system calls on Linux. Uh, uh, the, these numbers, the first number that, that we put into this register are the system calls number. These are different for 32-bit Linux and 64-bit Linux. So this is for 64-bit Linux. The one is the write system call. Then the, uh, here are the parameters to those system calls. It's uh, similar to how we would call a function, but not, not exactly the same. I, wrote, uh, I talked about this in, in earlier videos. So the first one is that we send the one, which is uh, which is a file. It expects a file descriptor, so an integer. And one is the standard out. Then we send the address of the of this string, which I refer as hello. Then uh, we have to pass in the length length of it, which I calculated here. Then we call the system call and uh, we return from this function, from the print function. Then we, it calls exit, which is similar. Uh, the RAX register will get the 60, which is the exit system calls number. And uh, here is the, the return value of the, of the whole program. And zero is the exit success. We call it and returns. We will actually never reach this because at, at this moment, uh, our, our process will, will exit, but it, this is this feels nicer. Um, okay, let's let's compile it. So we are on 64 bit. What is it called? I think it's called hello. Hello ASM. Okay, uh, then we will link it. Let's see whether it works. Yes, it works. We can take a look at look at uh, its instructions, what it compiled to. Minta syntax. And it's it's pretty simple. So uh, it changed a few things. For example, it uses the 32-bit um, um, registers. I mean, the RAX registers 32-bit part, because uh, uh, the reason for this because uh, is that the object code for that move instruction is shorter than the 64-bit version, and it achieves the same. So it zeroes out the, that part, the higher part of the RAX register. Okay, now this is not a self-modifying assembly code. This was just a simple hello world, but we will work with this. So let's create a copy of it. 
hello.esm and let's call it mod esm and let's start changing a few things okay first of all i i just add the nop instruction here and nothing else the reason reason why i do this because i want to show what's the object uh, object code uh, of the of that No, mod ASM So the NOP instructions object code is 90. We will use that later. That's why I wanted to show. The NOP instruction is basically is it's a filler, it, it doesn't do anything. It just takes some space in, in the text segment of, of the code and uh, it doesn't do anything else. But it, that, can, that can be very useful when you, when you want to move things around or you want to clear some things that what we will do now. So let's go back to mod ASM. And first, let's split these hello world into two, two separate words. I will not put a new line here. Let's create a separate word for, for the string verb and put the new line there. DB means, I think, data bytes. Okay. So now we have two strings. And instead of this, so the idea is that we will call the print functions twice and here we will modify the print function so th this is this is where i am going so so that that's where we will change the code and um, here we will print hello here we will print word so this is the top level okay how how can we how can we achieve that so here is where we actually put the actual string. So let's make a break here. So maybe this should be the print hello. Ah no, let's 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 make this the print word. And here we will jump to print hello, which is not written yet. Okay. This is print hello. And this looks okay. So when we call print, we will move. There is nothing here yet. So we will we will uh, set up set up the system calls. Uh, set up the system call. First the write uh, system call for, to the RAX register, the file descriptor one. So we are printing to the STD out. And uh, and then we jump here, and then we set up the remaining two, two uh, in, uh, registers to print out the hello. Then syscall, then return. So this this uh, this still works. It will print out uh, hello. Now here, which is currently unreachable code, we will print out uh, the word. Okay, so if we move here, then then we would print out the word if, if these two can be merged. Okay, what else do we need to do? Okay, let's let's write the modifier code. So that would be uh, we will overwrite this jump instruction. Uh, I will show the object code of the uh, of the jump instruction after after I've wrote this down. Uh, but basically, that's that's how it would would look, uh, work through it. You will first compile compile it, uh, and then then we we'll look at the instruction you want to overwrite because you want to know the size of it and may uh, um, definitely you need to know the size of it, you know, to know how many bytes you have to write there. Uh, it this this actually turns out to be two bytes long. 
So I will override the print. This is the address of the print word. So print word minus one. And I will write there uh, the not instruction, which was 19 hexadecimal. I will write this down later. Not write print word minus two. So with these two instructions, I wrote two knob instructions into this into this address space. You override jump to knob. Okay, so let's let's uh, go through how it should how it should work. So the start will be the the entry point of this binary. It will jump. It will call the function print, which will move here. It will set up set up the system call uh, halfway, then jumps to print hello. The print hello will put the the hello string there to the right place calls the Cisco, so it should print out hello, then returns. Then we will overwrite the print word minus one and minus two bytes with knobs, which is which was this one, and call print again. We go here, this will be two knobs, and then we will move here and we'll write out the word with this system call and return here. Then we will call exit. It looks okay. So let's compile it and hope for the best. Oh, well, at least it compiled. That's good. Oh, I, I promise that uh, we will take a look at that jump instruction. So where is it? Yeah. Here is the jump instruction. Here the, um, uh, of course, this is not linked, so so we, the addresses are not correct. But uh, what we see here is that uh, uh, this is two bytes long, so the two knobs should do its trick. And then let's link it now. And will it work? No, but. It worked to, to some some parts. So it wrote down hello and then we got a segmentation fault. Now this is this is uh, this is expected. Um, all the the binaries the are are in a so-called elf format. So let's let's take a look at uh, some sections of uh, with A we can take a look at the whole whole elf binary. Uh, again, I wrote. Uh, I talked more about this late uh, in in other videos. So we can see the entry address will be this one. And what I am looking for is the segment, segments. And here, here are they. Here they are. So this segment is the is the text segment where the code lives. So we have some data. And we have some uh, we have some BSS section section and, and data section. As we, we can see, the two flags for the codes uh, to the text segment, which uh, which has our code, and these are readable and executable, but not writable. So this is the reason why why we got a segmentation for it. This is a security feature. You want that. <laughs> So uh, some Linux, uh, uh, we will change this soon and then, then, uh, then uh, it will work. But I want to say that um, uh, this won't work on all, all Linux versions. This is uh, uh, basically the von Neumann, this is a weakness of the von Neumann architecture. So uh, normally you don't want your code segment to be writable. Um, so just to understand the rest of the part. How, so these parts are instruction for the loader when when your when your uh, when your code starts executing. So some parts of the file 
which is which is marked the uh, the offset of the file here will be mapped to this this address in the virtual memory and uh, these are the protection mode that that memory page will get before before it handles over the, the code at the entry point and we can take a look at take a look at the file at these these parts so let's do a quick hex dump on the file no mod so let's take a look at that so here here is the offset so there were lots of z this this star means that there were lots of zeros before that so here here is here as the elf elf header and all, all the elf elf thing is here and here here are uh, the this is the actual code um just a moment so the code code is actually pretty pretty uh, pretty small but it starts at the file offset one uh, 1000 and it goes to 2000 but the rest is zero and this this part of the file will be memory mapped uh, to the virtual memory at the four one four zero one one thousand i think uh, address I forgot forgot the exact number. And this this memory page will be readable and executable, but not writable. And this part will be readable and writable. This is where where we have uh, the hello world. Yeah, here is the new line. Here is a space. Okay. So how can we change that that flag? Now. I will. I um, okay. Let's let's say first what one, what didn't work for me. So there is this uh, thing called object copy, and it has a few few flags. So we this is how you can you can change an elf binary. And uh, writable text. So it has this one, this uh, uh, flag. Oh, you don't see. Uh, well, this didn't work. Then there is there is a, also something called set section flex. Section flex. Yes. Now that that also didn't work for me uh, because this is the segment. I basically didn't find a way to to override the segments. And there is also some flex to LD like minus n and big minus n that 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 does um, what what you want I mean making creating segments that are write, writable but uh, uh, they also do a lot more than I don't didn't want it so the the most surgically preci precise way to do that is just change that flag exit dot mod so uh, so this this is actually that flag um, it is similar to how how file file uh, five flags are set. So uh, you, you set different bits. So the five means that it's readable, executable. Uh, uh, the seven means that it's readable, executable, and uh, and uh, writable as well. Let's let's uh, let's um, check this with readout. I will only print out the segments now. And yes, I turned on that writable flag. Now, the, an, a much nicer way to do this would be, of, of course, to use some, some surgical uh, elf, elf manipulator. You can write this yourself. I, I, I saw some sample codes for it. Uh, so when, then you go, iterate over, over it, go to the text segment and, and change the flag yourself. But uh, yeah, I don't have a bash command for this. And now it works. So we have a, a that that page where we where we have the code will be mapped to this virtual memory address and that will have, have uh, the right flex. Um, okay, another way. So this we, we really changed our own code at runtime now. And a, a nicer way to do this is to uh, allocate uh, allocate a new page with uh, and then then call some variations of this system call and protect is is to set these these various flags like here prot read prot write prot exact and and make it prot writable 
and write, write a bunch of instructions there and then change it to prot readable and executable and lose the writable flag and then jump into it. And that way you basically loaded up some, some new code to, to your process. And I think that's a much, much friendlier way to, to write such a code. Oh, I did not talk about it, that uh, the CPU hates uh, this. Uh, let, let's let's take, take a look at uh, with GDP, what, what is happening. And then I will, I will continue why the CPU hates it. Let's set up a breakpoint here and uh, we can we can see what happens with the instructions as we are going over it. So the first was a print. Now we are overwriting. Uh, here's the jump instruction. Please take a look at the, this, this line here as I am I'm going to the next instruction, next in instruction. Now this is Oh, this is still a valid instruction because we, we wrote the first law. Okay, it could happen that this is not an actual instruction as, as we are overwriting it. And nope, nope, as we see. And we printed out Word. And the process exited normally. So this, this is actually a, a successful run, even, even in GDP. But yeah, this is scrambled now because we don't have access to it anymore. So what I wanted to uh, show is that uh, we are killing pipelining in the CPU. Yep. What did I? Ah, never mind. Uh, so when you when you change your own code, then then your CPU has to has to fall back to a very slow mode because uh, pipelining is to pull uh, pull up a bunch of instruction into some some. I I don't know the exact term for it. To, to a buffer and then then the CPU can reorder those instructions so with uh, like some some instructions I will wait for memory the others will not and 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 uh, there are some rules what what they can reorder uh, and uh, and basically it also does some pre branch predictions and and run those uh, a bunch of commands at the same time. Uh, be, even before before your actual instruction uh, you get there now if you start changing instruction then the cpu has to throw away the whole thing it has to flush uh, the pipeline and that that makes everything really slow i think i think it poisons the cache as well um, but if if you do this in, in an, uh, another memory page then then i think that's that's a much much nicer way okay now uh, I I will stop stop here, but uh, in the, in the next video I will talk about dynamic loading because this is this is these two are really closely related and I think that's a nice continuation from here. I hope I hope it was interesting. Yeah, thank you.